in the last lecture, we have introduced the concept of equivalent norm, which is defined a, we say the two norms are said to be equivalent, the norm this and norm 0, they are said to be equivalent if there exists the number, real number a and b such that this condition holds good for all x belonging to the norm space x and we have also discussed about an example where all the norms defined over R2 in a very different way they are equivalent norm basically. In fact, we have in general the result which says that for a finite dimensional case, the on a finite dimensional vector space any norm is equivalent to any other norm. So, on a finite dimensional vector space x any norm that is norm of this is equivalent to any other norm that is norm of 0 defined on it. So, this is general results since R 2 is a finite dimensional case. So, that is why we are getting with the in example in the previous example the norm which we have defined the form of norm x 1, norm x 2, norm x infinity they are coming to be equivalent norms. So, let us see the proof of this. Suppose the dimension of the vector space x is n and let e 1, e 2, e n be the basis elements for this. We basis for the vector space x. So, any element of this, so x if any arbitrary element, it can be expressed as can be expressed in terms of the basis element expressed as a linear combination of the basis element alpha x 1, alpha 1 x 1, alpha 2 x 2 plus alpha n x n. Now, if we take the norm of this with respect to the pre first one, then what we get is norm of alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 plus alpha n x n or this is equivalent to sigma norm of this sigma alpha i x i i is 1 to n under the norm. Now, since x 1 x 2 x n these are the linearly independent vectors because they are the elements of uh, I am writing e 1 e 2. So, let it be e 1 e 2 here e 1 e 2 e n. So, here is e n and this is also e 1 e 2 e n and since e 1 e 2 e n these are the linearly independent vectors because they are the basis elements for x. So, according to that one lemma which we have proved earlier that in case of a linearly independent vector one cannot get or we cannot expect a vector involving large number of scalars by the minimum length. So, we can always get a constant c greater than 0 such that this norm x greater than equal to c times sigma mod alpha i i is 1 to n by lemma which we have shown earlier clear. So, from here we can get this part norm sigma of mod alpha i i is 1 to n is less than equal to 1 by c norm of x let it be 1.
okay then again we start with this norm x under 0 the norm x the value of x under the norm 0 so this will be equal to norm alpha 1 x 1 alpha 1 e 1 alpha 2 e 2 and then alpha n e n with 0 apply the tangent inequality so we are getting is less than or equal to mod alpha 1 norm e 1 0 mod alpha 2 norm e 2 0 and so on mod alpha n norm of e n 0 if I take k to be the maximum of say norm e i 0 i is 1 to n then this whole thing can be written as less than or equal to k times sigma i is 1 to n mod alpha i. But we already have it from this equation 1 sigma of alpha i is less than or equal to 1 by c into this. So, we can further write it this is less than or equal to k into 1 by c norm of x norm of x and that gives you the norm of x 0 is less than or equal to say beta times norm of x say this way. where beta is some constant greater than 0 some constant beta. Okay? Now, if I interchange the position of norm 0 and norm, then we get in a similar way norm of x is less than or equal to alpha times norm of x 0. So, combined by a and b, combined a and b, we get a constant a and b can be obtained such that norm x lies between norm x 0 is lying between a times norm x less than or equal to b times norm x. So, this is the result which we require to okay. So, any two norms one can on a finite dimensional space are equivalent norms. The advantage of this result is that in case of a finite dimensional space we need not to bother about the uh, kinds of the norm because they give the same topology. G topology generated by any norm whether it is norm 0 or norm x will be the same. What is the topology in fact? The topology means like a topological space this is a pair x tau where x is an arbitrary set of elements x is an arbitrary set of elements and and tau is the collection of all the subsets of and tau is the collection of subsets of x which satisfies the following property which satisfy the following property. The first property that we get tau 1 the empty set phi and x both should be the element of tau must be an element of tau. Okay. Second property is that the union of any member any member members of tau is a member is a member of tau is a member of tau any uh, union of any member of tau is a member of tau and third property the intersection of intersection of 
finitely many. members of tau is a member of tau. So, if these three properties are satisfied, then we say the pair x tau is a topological space. In fact, if I go a general result, suppose x be a any RBT set and tau is the collection of open subsets open subsets of x then obviously empty set is an open set x is also an open set because these are the two non trivial cases trivial case and then the union of any collection of the open set is again a open the finite intersection of open set is open which is well known results. So, this set x with tau will be a topological space clear. So, collection of all the open subsets of x will form this a. in fact, this is the from here we have generated these definitions and because since this is true for all k. So, we can take this definition as an axioms or for the topological space or definition. Now, in case of the metric space, if x d be a metric space, then our distance notion d x by that also gives you the topology. Because you take any ball around the point this, find out the two point or say x naught, you can always find the distance between x to x naught by using this formula. So, an open wall means if the collection of all such points whose distance we can draw the wall which is totally contained inside it such thing we can always wait. So, this x t which is a metric space is a particular case of topological space topological space. In fact, every metric space is a topological space is satisfied. What we are interested in this equivalent norm, when you take the equivalent concept of the equivalent norms, then this equivalent norms give the same topology. That is the corresponding metric space when we get it, you are getting the collection of open set will be the same. So, that is the concept. We will not go in detail about this topological space because it is a another part of the here, we called it the topology for it. Okay. Now, we come for now our concept of the compact set. What is the compact set? A mid compactness compact set or compactness in a metric is compactness in a normal space. We define a metric space A metric space X is said to be compact to be compact if every sequence in X in X has a convergent subsequence convergent subsequence convergent. this we also call it a sequentially compact set definition of the sequentially sequentially compactness in fact, there are three ways of defining the compactness in a general topological space that requires the concept of the open cover. Every open cover has a finite sub cover, then the set will be a compact set, then every countable cover has a finite sub cover, then it is also a compact set and third is the sequentially compactness. The comp cover we mean suppose x be a set 
and this is our set M. There exist the subsets of X say B alpha which is a subset of X such that countable union of B alpha covers M. Then we say this collection of B alpha is the cover of M. And when this collection only finite number of B alphas are required, then we say it only finite number of elements are in are sufficient to cover M, then we say this collection uh, this cover has a finite sub cover. So, we define a set M in a general topological space as a compact set if every cover has a finite sub cover. Okay? The open cover has a finite sub cover. Then if they are countable in number, then we every countable cover has a sub finite sub cover then also we say it is a compact set. And third one is if every sequence in M has a convergence shape sequence which converges to a point in M, then we say it is a compact set. So, in case of a metric space all these three definitions coincide. Therefore, we can pick up any definition of a compact set either in the form of cover or maybe in the form of sequence. This is the most convenient way of defining the compactness in terms of the sequence. So, that is why we have chosen a definition of a compact set in a metric space H. A set is compact, a uh, space is compact if every sequence has a convergence subsequent. Now, if M is a subset of M, then M how to define the compactness of M? This we say that a subset of M, a subset M of X is said to be compact is said to be compact if M is compact if M is compact considered edge a subspace of X edge a subspace of X. It means the meaning of this is that every sequence in M must have a subsequence which converges to a point of M. That is the meaning is every sequence in M, every sequence in M has a convergence subsequence. subsequence whose limit point limit point is limit point is an element of m okay so if a sequence whose limit point may not belongs to m then m will not be considered to be a compact subset of m Okay. So, condition for the compactness for a subset is that all these points of the sequence must be the point of M and when you take the limiting value, the limit point has to be the point of M. That is the definition. Okay. Now, we have a very simple concept in the of a compact set in a finite dimensional case. In fact, we will say prove that in case of the finite dimensional, a compact set means it is closed and bounded that is every closed and bounded set is compact and vice versa. But in general when the space is not finite dimensional then this concept this closed and bounded set need not turn out to be a compact set. So, that we will see before going let us see the one lemma that shows the one way in a general metric space a compact subset M of a metric space X D is closed and bounded is closed and bounded. So, this is the result true for any arbitrary metric space whether it is a finite dimensional or whether it is a infinite dimensional. A compact subset 
of a metric space will always be closed and bounded. The proof is like <laughs> we want m to be closed, m is closed, this is required to prove. Okay? So, that is what to prove is m bar is equal to m, but m is always be a subset of m bar. So, it is enough to prove enough to show m bar is contained in m. So, finally, if I prove that m bar is contained subset of m, then m will be closed. So, let us take an element x belongs to m bar. What is m bar? m bar is the closure of this is the closure of m that is a set which contains all the points of m together with its limit point. So, if x belongs to m bar either x will be a point of m then nothing to prove because it will be a subset of m. But if x is not a point of m then it has to be a limit point of m. So, this implies that there must be a sequence x n in m such that x n must go to x in the of course, metric d whatever the metric d is there. So, there is a sequence which converges to x, but what is given is m is compact. So, every every sequence must have a convergence subsequence. So, this sequence will have a convergence subsequence, but since m is compact is given. So, by definition every sequence has a convergence subsequence. So, x n will also have a convergence subsequence whose limit point will not different from x because the limit point will remain the same. So, that way if x n is a convergent all of its subsequence will have converged to the same points. So, it has a convergence therefore, this sequence x n has a convergence subsequence which converges to x and it must be a point of m because m is compact therefore, m bar is a subset of m. So, m is equal to m bar hence m is closed. Okay? So, if a m is a compact set then it has to be a closed set. To show the m is bounded this we will prove by a contradiction. Suppose it is not true, suppose m is unbounded, suppose m is not bounded. It means the meaning is this that a set is said to be bounded if this is set m, when we say it is bounded, if we are able to draw a ball around a some point b with a positive radius r such that all the points of the set m are totally within this ball m is it not. So, if we assume m is unbounded it means there must be a some sequence of the point in m available whose distance from b keeps on increasing as n tends to infinity means it can we cannot find any suitable radius r so that a ball can be drawn around the point b with a suitable r such that all the points are inside the ball okay so if m is not bounded it means there exists a sequence by n in m such that the distance of by n from some fixed point b is greater than n okay where v is a fixed point n is some fixed point of so, as increases y distance keeps on increasing. Therefore, this by n this sequence by n cannot have a convergence of sequence because if it is has a convergence of sequence its distance from b cannot be an arbitrary large it will always converge to a certain point and distance will remain less than a finite number. So, this shows this sequence by n cannot have a convergence such sequence which will contradict our uh, our assumption that m is compact. 
because m is giving to be compact. So, which contradicts the fact that m is compact, because by definition a set is said to be compact if every sequence must have a convergence subsequence. Therefore, our assumption is wrong. The assumption is that m is unbounded is not correct. Therefore, m is bounded. So, m is bounded. Clear? So, this lemma suggests that if a set is given in a metric space and if it is given to be compact, then it has to be closed and bounded. But it does not say anything about the converse side. Other, if m is given to be closed and bounded in an arbitrary metric space, whether this set m will be compact or not. Now, in general, this is not true. So, converse is not true in general. That is, a set, a closed and bounded set and bounded set in a general metric space, in a general metric space, in fact, infinite dimensional metric space x d need not be compact. For example, Suppose I take this set M or X to be L infinity, set of all bounded sequences and M be the set of this type 1, 0, 0, E 2, 0, 1, 0, 0 and so on E n 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 like this it is nth place and like this. Suppose m is this set. Now, the norm of this is defined in terms of the supremum over i. So, each one is having the norm 1. And so, each has the norm, it means the set M, so the set M is bounded set. Clear? The <laughs> M is also closed. Why? Closed means all of its limit point must belong to it, but basically the set M is a point set, since M is a point set point set means each one is a point only. So, they do not have any limit point. So, no limit point is there, no limit point. It means we can assume all the limit points lies inside this. So, m is closed, but m is not compact. Why? Because if it is compact, then by definition, every sequence must have a convergence subsequence. Suppose, I take a sequence like E 1, E 5, E 9 and so on. What is the limit point of this or whether this will have any subs subsequence limit point lies? No, because E 1 is 1 0 0, E 5 is 0 0 0 1 and 0 and like this. So, there is no relation between this and cannot, it means it cannot go to any limit point. Okay. So, a sequence cannot have an, any, a, we cannot get a sequence which has a convergence of sequence. Therefore, m, this example shows that m is not compact. So, though it is close and bounded, but it is not compact. What is the dimension of L infinity? It is infinity. So, here we have chosen an example where the space is L infinity and we have got a thing where m is closed and bounded, but not compact. So, in fact, we will have a result that result says that in case of the finite dimensional space, the closed and bounded sets are compact. So, that is very good results that for a finite dimensional case, 
the closed and bounded sets are compact. So, in a finite dimensional case, in a finite dimensional norm space x norm, any subset m any subset m of x is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded and bounded ok. So, we have already seen the one way that if m is compact then it implies closed and boundedness. Every compact set is a closed and bounded whether the space is finite dimensional or infinite dimensional. The other way round was a problem because in case of the infinite dimensional we have seen the closed and boundedness uh, space need not imply the compactness. But here in case of the finite dimensional we will prove that even the closed and bounded set will also lead to the set to be a compact set. So, suppose m is closed and bounded ok, this is given, given let it not suppose let m be is closed and bounded or given that m is closed and bounded clear. We wanted to prove m is compact, m is compact. It means if I prove that every sequence in M has a convergence subsequence, then it will be compact. Okay. So let X M be a sequence, be an arbitrary sequence, arbitrary sequence in M. Now, since the dimension of X is n which is finite and let e 1, e 2, e n these are the basis element for x. So, x m can be expressed in terms of these basis element is alpha 1 e 1 plus alpha 2 e m e 2 plus alpha n m e n means there exist scale as alpha 1 m alpha 2 m alpha n m. So, that x can x m can be expressed in terms of this clear. Now, given that m is bounded. So, norm of x m must be bounded by certain number k, k is greater than equal to norm of x m ok, because norm of x m is less than equal to k the length will be finite. But what is the norm? This is equal to alpha 1 m e 1 alpha 2 m e 2 alpha n m e n. Now, again e 1 e 2 e n are linearly independent vectors, vectors. So, by that lemma again that one cannot expect a vector involving large number of scalars and the minimum length. It means there will be a constant c such that this thing will hold. where c is greater than 0. Okay. So, from here we get that sigma of alpha i mod alpha i m i is 1 to n is less than equal to k y c let it be 1. Okay. Let it be 1. Now, if I fixed i fix i, then this alpha i m mod of this is bounded sequence. So, this sequence alpha i m is a bounded sequence. So, if it is a bounded sequence, then 
by Bolzano Restra's property. So, by Bolzano Restra's theorem, every boundary sequence has a convergent subsequence or it has a convergent subsequence. So, by Bolzano Restra's property, it has a convergent subsequence. Is it not? Which converges to a certain point, say x i alpha i m is a convergent subsequence. Therefore, our sequence x m has a convergent subsequence, say z m, which goes to the point z, which is equal to sigma alpha i e i 1 to n, n elements in this class belongs to m. Okay. Why it belongs to m? Which belongs to m because m is giving to be closed. The, because we have assumed m is closed and bounded. So, boundedness from the boundedness we have got this part that since because the boundedness for each fixed i this sequence of scalars is a bounded sequence. Once it is bounded sequence apply the Bolzano Restas property theorem, you will get a subsequence which converges to alpha i. It means alpha 1 m will converge to alpha 1, alpha 2 m will converge to alpha 2 and so on. So, the point x m has a convergence subsequence which converges to alpha 1 e 1, alpha 2 e alpha n e n. Now, this point a must be a point of m because m is given to be closed. So, any sequence whose limit point all the limits point must be the point of m. Therefore, this belongs to m. So, what we conclude is that if we start with an arbitrary sequence in M, then it has a convergence subsequence whose limit point belongs to M. Therefore, M is compact. So, this completes the proof. Clear? So, in a finite dimensional case, the compactness is nothing but the closing bound, and that is why in case of the R1, in case of the C1, we simply say closed and bounded sets are compact, okay, like this way, clear, we get. Okay. Now, there is another results which will give you a further deeper study, which will help you in further deeper study of the norm space for in case of the finite dimensional. The result is known as F re h lemma, F re h lemma. What is this lemma? The lemma says let y and z <laughs> y and z be subspaces of a norm space. Of a norm spaces norm space x subspace of a norm space x of any dimension of any dimension and suppose and suppose that y is closed y is closed and is a proper subset proper subset of z then this lemma says then for every real number theta every real number theta in the interval 0 1 in the interval 0 1 there exist a z or there is a z belonging to capital Z such that the norm of z or length of this vector is 1 and its distance from the element y is 
our pre sign number theta for all by belonging to capital by. So, it is very interesting here what this shows is that suppose here we have a norm space ok x norm and let this be a by and this is our say z both are subspaces of x, but by is given to be a closed and proper subset uh, subspace of subset of z closed as well as proper. Then what this shows is that if I take any number theta between 0 and 1 say 1 by 4 or 1 by 2 then corresponding to that number one can identify a point z in capital Z whose length is 1 and whose distance from any elements y distance of this from y is greater than or equal to theta where y belongs to this because z minus y is greater than or equal to theta. Okay. So, this will be a lemma and which will help you in computing in proving many results in case of the finite. The proof of this lemma goes like this. Since by is a proper subset object, so let us choose an element v belonging to z minus by. Okay, so v will be an a point here. Since by is closed, so find out the distance from b to this by. So let a be the distance. of v from y that is y formula the a becomes infimum of norm v minus y of over y belongs to capital y. Okay. Now, obviously, a is greater than 0 because y is closed. So, we can always find a point we can get the point whatever the v it lies in y only and v is lying outside of the v. So, the a must be greater than 0. So, clearly a is greater than 0 as y is closed. Okay. Now, let us pick up the theta choose theta belonging to 0 1. Now, this infimum definition says that since the infimum is attained. So, we can find a point y naught in this where the infimum is attained and that y naught v, v minus y naught is exactly a. So, if we pay, take any point other than y naught then what we get is we can find out the number between a n a theta y a n a y theta a n a y theta theta lying between 0 1. So, a y theta is greater than a and this infimum is attained. So, we can find out the there is a uh, in point by naught such that infimum uh, that this is greater than equal to norm of v minus by naught is less than equal to this okay, because of the infimum thus one. Okay. <laughs> Let us choose z as c into v minus by naught where c is oh sorry c not z c is 1 by norm of v minus y naught. Suppose, I take z this by choosing this way we can immediately say mod z is 1 okay. and what is its distance from any arbitrary point y that comes out to be for any any y belongs to capital Y we have we have norm of this thing by which is equal to what norm of c v minus y naught minus y and this will be equal to c if we take it outside v minus y naught minus c inverse y which is equal to c v minus y 1 because we are y 1 stands for y naught plus c inverse by which is an element of y because y is a subspace. So, this will be the point in y. Okay. Now, this c is nothing but this one. Okay. 
So, which shows that y 1 belongs to now v minus y, y 1 is greater than a this is greater than equal to c into a why because y 1 is an arbitrary point and a is the minimum infimum. So, this substitute this c is 1 upon into a and this part is greater than equal to what a y a by theta okay, because of this clear. So, from here we get this is equal to theta. So, since y is an arbitrary point is an arbitrary point of capital Y. So, we get for any point z minus y is greater than equal to theta and that is the required complete the proof. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> this lemma, Rh lemma, gives you immediate one application of this that in case of the finite dimensional, if a norm space has a property that a unit wall is compact, then it must be a finite dimensional. So, if a norm space x has a property, this result application of this lemma is if a norm space x norm has a property has a property that the closed unit ball unit wall m norm of x is less than equal to 1 each compact then x is finite dimensional space. So, this is a very interesting and important result because so far we have seen a kind of if x be a finite dimensional space, then a closed and compact uh, bounded set is a compact set, because unit ball closed unit ball is a bounded and closed. So, it must be compact, but if I take the other ground, if a non space has a property that a closed unit ball is compact, then it must be a finite dimensional. So, let us see the proof of this. Again we prove by contradiction, suppose m is compact given m is assume that m is compact. but x dimension of x is not finite is infinite. So, when say the dimension is fi infinite then we can find out the so many points inside it x 1, x 2, x n and so on. So, let us pick up a point x 1 of norm 1. So, let x 1 belongs to x such that norm of x 1 is 1. Now, with the help of this x 1 generate a space x 1 generate x 1 as a linear combination of this which is a subspace of x of dimension 1. Now, this is a proper subset of x, this is a proper subspace of x. So, by this previous lemma by Rh lemma we can find a point x 2 which is in x having the norm 1 and whose distance from x 1 can be made greater than equal to theta. So, we can so by r h represent r h theorem or lemma we can there exist an element x 2 belonging to x of norm 1 such that the distance from x 2 minus x 1 is greater than equal to theta say half. Okay? So, yeah. Now, we have got the two points x 1 and x 2. So, generate with the help of these two point another space x 2 which is the linear combination of alpha x 1 plus beta x 2 
linear combination of this okay generates this one all alpha beta are constants so it is a span of x1 comma x2 now this is a subset of x again and again a proper subspace of x so again by rh lemma we can further find so by rh lemma or rh theorem we can find x3 in x of norm 1 and of norm 1 such that his distance from the elements of x2 will be greater than equal to the value theta say half. Greater than equal to half. So, if we continue this way we get a sequence norm of x 1 x m minus continue this way we get this is greater than equal to half for n and m as large for any n m greater than equal to certain points. Okay? What does shows? This shows that this sequence x n the sequence x n cannot be cannot have a convergence of sequence have convergent subsequence why because if a sequence is convergent it must be a Cauchy sequence because it is a sequence of real complex number so if it is a convergent sequence it has to be every Cauchy sequence it is a Cauchy sequence convergent means it is Cauchy so distance between x m minus x n must be less than epsilon r. but here the distance between x m and x n is greater than equal to half arbitrary uh, say greater than equal to say epsilon r which is greater than which is equal to half therefore this sequence cannot have a convergent subsequence hence if it cannot be convergent subsequence hence the set m is not compact so this contradicts the compactness of m this contradicts the compactness of m hence our assumption that is the x has a dimension infinity is wrong that is dimension of x is right so the dimension of x must be finite that is what exactly we prove okay so this compactness is now <laughs> there are certain problems which we will discuss here now rn and cn these are the compacts or not let us see few problems here okay as we have discussed last time there were some examples for the norm on a matrix space norm on the matrix okay. norm on matrix okay let's see just one or two eh? suppose a b a matrix a i j of order m cross n with fixed m and the a i j may be either real or complex eh? okay then we can introduce the norm in so many the norm of this a can be written a sigma like this a i j a i j and then this way a i j mod a i j summation is suppose i is 1 to n 1 to m and then maximum value you can choose over j you verify whether this is a norm verify whether this norm another way is <coughs> i am just saying norm 1 is the maximum of i sigma j 1 to n a i j whether it is norm and then you can also define in another way okay so first you verify these are the norms and whether they are equivalent norm or not 
that will give from the okay thank you